Hello, this is Warlord, and we're going to take a look at moving some random Daz clothing and other items over into Real Illusions Character Creator 3 so that we can use it in iClone. Let's go ahead and get started. Now what I've got here, it says B25 Tango Down, looks like it's for uh, Victoria 4. Now I'm not that much of a poser and Daz Studio user, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I know how to use this software, but I do know how to get things out of this software and into iClone. So if anyone spots something I'm doing that could be done better when I'm in Daz, just let me know. Well, let's go ahead and let's get started with the pants. And that's all I'm going to do is just get the pants in. I'm not going to load any characters or anything like that. I'm going to export it, and I'm going to export it as OBJ. So I'm going to come in and just type in pants. iClone is centimeters, so we'll leave that like it is. And now we're ready to jump over into character creator. From here, now this is just the stock character. You may or may not want these on here. If you don't, just remove them. Come up to create cloth hair. Navigate to where you put the pants. All right, now we're just going to position it as best as we can. It wasn't made for this character, so it's not going to fit it exactly. And we're probably going to find that not every piece of clothing is going to work. Let's just see what happened. In fact, I think I'll mirror that. And that's certainly not perfect, but it's close. We'll give that a try. From there, we will come over and we will go click, select our pants and then we're going to transfer skin weights and we're going to leave it on default that's like shirts and pants. We're going to apply it. Depending on what you're working on, it may take a while. Now once that's been applied, I go from there into conform and then I'm going to calculate collision and see what happens. Most of the times this works, sometimes you just want to go in and increase the size up here. And this may take a while also to calculate this. So we'll just have to sit here and see what happens. Okay, there we go. Now, if you're not happy with that, you of course can still come in and increase the size a little bit. Okay, let's delete the pants load in the shirt and now take a look at your meshes you'll notice here it's like it's it's curled up or folded up kind of on the edge when you go in to fit it you want to make sure you remember that there's not going to be a straight edge there to fit so let's go ahead and export then move on over in character creator create cloth hair accessories shirt okay now this funny coloring here that is one of the maps that is actually the bump map let's go ahead and let's see about getting this centered a little better I'm going to change my pivot just because it's easier to work with this way and let's just move it back and kind of split the difference Remember what I was talking about, about that edge. You're not going to get an edge flat across because it wasn't shaped that way. Okay, I think we're ready to go ahead and give it a try. Transfer the skin weight. Leave it on default. Then let's come over to conform. Calculate collision. Again, this may take a while. Also, something I didn't tell you before, you'll want to save as default after you do your calculate collision that way you won't have to ever do it again just go ahead and save that as default at the time okay now we're finished with it and that's what i mean by save as default now that will fit this figure when we put it on we can come back here now and go in and I'm, this bump map is what's kind of giving us trouble and anyway as you can see 
we've got that much shape to it already now you just keep doing this for all the items that you want to move over let's go ahead and take the battle harness file export battle harness and we're just going to go through the same process again some things may be a little more difficult than others I'm sorry to uh, line up But once you get it lined up, then you'll always have it in there working. All right. Now, this was not closed on the model up here. So we don't want to try and get it to where, you see what I mean? That's open right there on the little choker part. So we don't want to try and close that when we're working on it. Move it back. You notice most of these have just been straight back. Sometimes you have to go up and down a little. And it's just kind of a trade-off. I want to say that looks pretty good, at least for our purposes. And we'll come up here and transfer the skin weights. And once again, leave it on default. Let it do its magic. Come up to conform, calculate that collision, and I do this on all of them even if it looks like it's fitting good. That's probably just personal preference. And we just sit here and wait for it to do its thing. Save it as default. Now you can move several items at once if you wanted to because you can always use the element function to move individual pieces of those and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and let's export the elbow pads. And I'll just save them as pads. Then we're going to create cloth hair accessories, pads. And then I'm going to go ahead and change my pivot again so I can get it up a little closer to me. And let's see, how do we want to do this? First off, we'll move it in position as best we can like this. And as you can see, they just don't quite fit. So this is where we can go in to Edit Mesh. And what we'll do is we will use element. Element would break these into individual pieces if it was made that way. Like what I'm doing now is I'm selecting this one element. This is a pretty good size mesh, so it's going to take it a bit for it to select it. It have to select every vertice in there. Then once it's selected, you now have your tools available to go ahead and put it just a little better. Doesn't have to be perfect. All you're trying to do is just get it on there good enough that iClone can handle it. Uh, face allows you to pick an individual triangle, vertex, just what it says, one of them vertex dots, or a group of them, whatever you want to select it. Sculpting is kind of like what you do in Mudbox and ZBrush. It's a powerful tool in itself. Now, I'm not going to sit here and do these just perfect because of the time it would take, but you could sit here and tweak these however you want it. try and get it to fit as best you can. As you can see, this one right here, I haven't done too well, especially when you look at it from this side. Now, we could have just gone in and see how it handled it. But let's wait just a second for it to select, and then I will move it. We haven't done any poly reduction. So again, that's why things are pretty high poly. Let's just, let's just leave them like that and see what happens. We can go back and forth all day. Let's transfer skin weights. Default. Apply.
and conform calculate collision I could have done a lot better job of adjusting those but didn't want the tutorial to just drag on so let's go ahead and see how character creator handles it okay not too bad enough that they can be usable now here is the final character I added the boots and the hair and eye clone and then brought it back into character creator 3 and this is what it looks like and I'll also show you what it looks like in eye clone in motion for no more time than we had to invest in it that made a pretty good character